Okay, uh, now I'm starting to uh, take up take apart our suspension mounts again. Um, what we need to do is measure three different locations on the suspension arm. So we need the overall length from hinge pin to hinge pin. We need the length from the hinge pin to our shock mounting location. And we need the length from our hinge pin to our anti-roll bar mounting location. So those dimensions are all pretty easy to take. Um, uh, the hinge pin to hinge pin is just measure again outside to outside of the pins and make sure you've got it as accurate as you can get it. And what I've got here is 55.5 minus one half of the diameter of this hinge pin, which is three millimeters divided by two, which is one and a half, and then half the diameter of this pin, which is two millimeters. So take all that into consideration and you've got uh, uh, 50, uh, 53 millimeters from the center of this to the center of the other one. So and then similarly we can <laughs> measure the location for the uh, shock. So you want to go straight so sometimes you have to measure to the outside of this, this boss here. So we just measure that dimension. And we have to flip to this page. So I've measured from outside to outside. So I've got 37.7. And then half of the diameter of this boss, which is 7 millimeters divided by 2. And then half of the um, screw, which is uh, a 3 millimeter screw. So do that little calculation. That tells you where the uh, bottom of the shock mounts. Now if you have suspension arms that have multiple holes here then you would have to <coughs> either determine the distance center to center to the holes or re repeat this measurement uh, two or three times depending on how many alternate positions you've got. Uh, the anti-roll bar determined exactly the same. I don't need to show you how to do that. It's recorded at the very end here. So we've got our anti-roll bar. So from the uh, outside of this to the outside of our ball where the anti-roll bar uh, mounts is 28.7, half of this diameter again, which is seven divided by two, and half of the diameter of the uh, ball, which in this case is 4.24 divided by two. So do that for the front and the rear and then you're all set. That's uh, taking care of all the measurements that you need to take off the uh, suspension arms and now we can start doing some more assembly. Okay we're back again. Uh, as you can see we've assembled a little bit more of the chassis. Um, going to determine a few more points here. Um, it's easier to do this without the suspension arms mounted so I have not put those uh, back on yet but what we're going to do is we're going to measure the locations of the inner camber link uh, ball studs and we're also going to measure the position of the um, uh, upper shock mounts. So these are fairly simple to do when you've got the chassis in this situation. So to measure the uh, X2 dimension as it's called on the measurement sheet for the um, ball studs we just measure out to out. I go usually go with the uh, uh, the neck section it's easier to get your calipers on. So we measure uh, <coughs> that overall dimension and then just measure the diameter of the neck which is 2.47 and we take the outside dimension that we measured 42.44 minus the 2.47 um, because we want uh, the dimension to the center line of the chassis, we divide all that by 2. Okay, the Y2 dimension, which is from the center of the pivot to the bottom of the chassis, is uh, also fairly easy to do. Let me just, maybe it's easier if I do it this way, so you can see, and yeah, maybe not. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is just measure from the bottom of the chassis to the top. And I want to make sure I've got my calipers on there flat. And measure to the top of the ball stud. So from the bottom of the chassis to the top of the ball stud. So that, so from the bottom of the chassis to the top of the ball stud was 4127. And then we take off our magic number that we calculated earlier for the distance from the top of the flat on the ball stud down to the center of the uh, ball stud. <coughs> okay, um, the other thing that we need to do is we need to measure the position of alternate positions for the camber link. So to do that, it's fairly straightforward. We just have to uh, move the ball studs and complete the measurement that we just did for the outside the outside. The vertical will be the same. And I just put a little sketch on the on the page here so we can record what those measurements are. Now I've already done that and the distance between the holes is two millimeters. So now when we go to create the model we'll have those alternate positions that we can put in as well. Okay so that takes care of the um, ball stud locations, inner camber link locations. So now what we need to do is measure positions of the upper mount for the shock. And again, that's fairly easy to do as well when you've got it in this condition. What I've done is I've just put a couple three millimeter screws in the in the holes. So now I can just Put my calipers on there, measure outside to outside. Again, this is the X1, so it's at the narrowest point. So outside to outside was 67.23 minus the diameter of the screws that I've got there, which is three millimeters, and divide that whole thing by two. So now I'll get the height. I always measure down this way. You could measure, try and measure in this direction, but once you get out to the outer point, sometimes it's hard to grab a spot on the chassis. So I always find this method works best, is I just measure down from the top of the uh, screw or ball stud or whatever you have in there to, to measure to, down to the surface that you're working from. So that gets you the dimension to the underside of the chassis. So I always check it a few times to make sure I got a consistent reading. And there we have 44.94 minus one half of the diameter of the screw. Because we want the distance to the center of that screw. Okay, so repeat that front and rear. And uh, you've got all the measurements that you need for the inner camber link mount and the shock mount. Uh, one other thing that we can do before we start assembling things, and I will be checking this again after I put the car on the setup station, but I'll just show you, <coughs> show you measuring the um, uh, length of the camber links. So I'm not sure which one this is, whether it's the front or rear, but just measure from inside to inside, or you can measure from outside to outside, um, and we just take off the diameter of the whatever we're measuring to. So I'm going to try it from inside to inside. And that gives me 50.16. And then the inside diameter of that is 4 millimeters. So the length of that camber link would be, just go back. Actually, I'm not even going to write it down because I'm not sure whether that's the front or the rear. But either way, you can measure from the outside to outside. You can do it this way, outside to outside, and then subtract off the outside diameter of the uh, of the uh, ball cup, 
or you can measure it from inside to inside and do the same thing and just measure or re remove the inside diameter of the bulk up. Either way works. Uh, but as I say, I'm going to be checking that uh, once I put it on the setup station because I've just built these to what the manual said and I'm not sure what sort of camber numbers that's going to give me. Okay, that's it for this section. Uh, we're going to move on to uh, putting some more bits on here and doing the um, steering assembly. Okay, now we're going to take uh, measurements for the steering rack, steering assembly. Um, there's a couple measurements we need to take off the chassis first. So, and those are the uh, center to center uh, of the pivot for the uh, steering rack arms. And the other one is the distance from the center of the steering rack arms <coughs> to the center of the axle. So the center to center of the steering rack arms is very simple. We just measure the inside to inside of this and the diameter of the hole, uh, take the overall minus the diameter of the hole, <laughs> and um, we've got the uh, center to center distance of the steering arms. Now, <clears throat> to measure the distance from the center of the steering arms to the center of the axle line takes a little bit more work. So uh, I've actually got the bulkheads in here, but I did this measurement before I put the uh, <coughs> bulkheads in. So you measure from the center of the steering uh, rack armhole to the center of the um, first bulkhead hole and take the diameter of the holes off. So that gives us a center to center dimension from uh, the steering rack arms to the first bulkhead hole <clears throat> and then we take the center to center distance of the uh, two bulkhead mounting holes and subtract off the diameter of the hole and divide that by two and that gets us to the center point between those two which is the center of the uh, drive shaft. So I'll just show you those calculations here quickly. <coughs> so this is the the LCC dimension is the dimension from the center of the steering rack arms to the center of the axles so what I did was is as I mentioned I took the distance from the center of the steering rack arms or from the outside edge of the steering rack arms subtracted the diameter of the hole so that gives me the center to center distance there and then added to that <coughs> the distance between the uh, two bulkhead mounting holes uh, divided by two. So that's that calculation. Um, the XB dimension, which is the uh, distance between the uh, two uh, uh, steering rack arm mounting holes, is just that outside measurement minus the three millimeter hole diameter. So very simple measurement there. So now we need to take some measurements off the actual <coughs> steering rack components themselves. So the first is I've got the rack here. So we measure the outside the outside of the rack and then we take off the diameter of the uh, the outside diameter here and that gives us 34.7 minus 8.7 is 26. So in this case the the center to center on the rack and the uh, mounting point for the uh, rack arms is the same. They're both 26 millimeters. So the next thing we need is uh, <clears throat> the locations of these ball studs. So the XB dimension, which is the center to center of the ball studs, and the YBS dimension, which is from the center of the steering rack mount, or pivot to the center of the ball studs. So the XBS dimension is very simple. I've done this many times in the course of this, just outside the outside minus the diameter of the uh, the neck of the ball stud, and you're there. Now the X or YBS is a little bit trickier, uh, just because these things are not all nice and nicely in line. So what you can do is just take your calipers, lay them across the top of the ball studs, across the flat on the ball studs, and then just measure 
to the outside diameter of the uh, steering rack pivot. Uh, once we've done that, then we have to subtract half of the diameter of this plus our magic little number that we figured out earlier for the distance from the top of the ball stud down to the ball stud pivot. So, so the XBS dimension here is the 10.48 minus the 2.48 which is the neck diameter of the ball stud. <coughs> the YBS dimension is 15.08 minus the diameter of the uh, uh, steering rack pivot and minus our magic 1.54. So that gets you all the dimensions that you need for the steering rack. The only one we are missing is the LT, which is the tie rod. Um, and again, that dimension, same as we did before for the other tie rods, we can either measure inside to inside or outside to outside uh, to get that number. Uh, but I'm going to hold off doing that because I want to put this on the setup station before I uh, determine what all those numbers actually are. Okay, that's it.